Voting trends among married women could be shifting in an NPR article titled Married Women may be moving away from the GOP. Asma Khalid explores research suggesting that this historical conservative group could actually be turning more democratic this November. She joins us now to discuss this. Asma, thank you very much for joining us. I want to start by breaking down why exactly have married men been, excuse me, women been historically more conservative over the past few decades? You know, I think there's been a few different theories about why that's the case. Uh, when you look at political science research, there's a, a few different ideas. One suggests the idea of overall marriage as an institution may lead women to more sort of conservative philosophies. Another is the idea of spousal influence, and that really one of the big trends we've seen since the 1960s and 1970s has been the move of white men, in particular, away from the Democratic Party. And so maybe in some cases, there's some, some sort of like spousal influence in these cases where husbands' politics ends up influencing their, their wives. What would they say are the most important factors that would cause these voters to actually shift their political affiliation? So what I think I've noticed uh, this election cycle is it really comes down to the president in power at this point, President Trump. A number of the women that I spoke with uh, either had voted for Republicans in the past, um, saw themselves as being somewhat independent, but really spoke to me very specifically about President Trump, his demeanor, his personality as a reason for why they've begun to question the Republican Party as a whole. Now, I want to preface this by saying, you know, this could be a blip. Maybe it's no indication of a long-term trend. And I really think that we need to be cautionary when we look at this idea of are married women really fundamentally shifting away from the Republican Party? Or is this just a, a side effect, a potential consequence as a result of President Trump? You spoke to Anna Greenberg, a Democratic pollster that conducted the, this polling on married women's approval of President Trump. Tell me a little bit more, Asma, about what she found. So she uh, has been essentially doing tracking polling since uh, the election of President Trump I mean, prior to that, but she's specifically been looking at the approval and disapproval figures of how people view President Trump. So when I called her, you know, to get some guidance on this particular story, she said that she really looked down into the internals, meaning what sort of specific demographic groups felt about the president. And she saw that from March of 2017, until very recently, just a couple of weeks ago when I called her, she had seen about a 20 percentage point shift in how married women feel about President Trump, meaning that about 40 percent of women disapproved, had a negative opinion of President Trump in March of 2017. That number is now closer to 60 percent. It's around 57 percent. That's a very monumental shift. Again, we don't know that it's going to translate into how people will vote, but it's an indication mm -hmm. of potentially how they may vote. You know, you write about a race in Michigan's 11th congressional district. How does that race serve as an example of sort of the, broad, the broader rift when you look at female voters? So I went to Michigan's 11th in particular because there are two women, uh, two millennial women who are contesting uh, an open congressional seat. And so to some degree, I thought, well, maybe this will remove gender as a potential factor in how people are voting because you have a 37 year old woman and a 35 year old woman uh, running Republican and Democrat for this seat. But what I found really interesting is this is a, a very sort of classic suburban house district. Uh, parts of it are extremely affluent and parts of it are extremely Republican. Um, we could say fiscally conservative in that way. And so I, I wanted to hear from women voters, particularly in these areas, to see if there was any shift in how they've been feeling uh, since the election of President Trump. And again, this is sort of anecdotal data, but what, what did amaze me was the degree to which we see sort of an energy and enthusiasm among some women who are Democrats, um, who told me that prior to the election in 2016, maybe they had voted. Uh, beyond that, they never saw themselves as being politically engaged. And we are seeing an uptick in their enthusiasm. Um, and many people, you know, when I talked to them, didn't really see the clear divide between marriage or having children and their politics. In fact, some of these women told me that they feel they've become more democratic, more liberal uh, as a result of having children mm. and how they want their children to, to grow up and who they want to see as president in that role. I know we spent a lot of time looking at married women, but I, I, I'm curious about single women as well. Did you look into that? Are there any notable trends in how they will vote? You know, so single women uh, do make up a plurality of the women in this country, a plurality of the electorate, in fact, and uh, overall, 
they have been tilting Democratic. That, that's that been the case for a number of election cycles. I think what's interesting is when you look at census data, the percentage of women in this country who are single, whether that's uh, being never married, divorced or widowed, has been growing. And so as a result, even if they have consistently voted more Democratic, their numbers are growing. And um, and so I guess we'll sort of see how that plays out in election cycles to come. Absolutely. An important voting block, single women as well as married women. Asma Khalid, I want to thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure.